Good morning, everyone. Uh, we still have some folks joining. Um, we're still letting folks in, so I just want to give it one minute. I do want to apologize for our lateness. We had a little bit of technical difficulty. I'm sure we're all familiar with that in this virtual world that we're living in. Um, and we, you know, we are no exception to that. Sometimes it happens to us too. So thank you for your grace and um, understanding. And um, it looks like the, it's slowed down a bit. Um, so I think it's it's safe to go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. My name is Jessica Carroll and I am the interim program manager for the Measure 110 program. Thank you all for being here. Um, and I think the, the last two slides that you all just saw were just some directions on how to change your name in, in, in Zoom, I almost said Teams, we often use Teams, um, in Zoom. And so if you want to add your organization's name uh, to your name, uh, please feel free to do so. You can do it, I believe, by right-clicking um, on those three dots that come up. Um, uh, so uh, welcome. Happy Thursday. Uh, we are here today to do a little bit of technical assistance around um, uh, insurance uh, and general use of Measure 110 funds. Um, so uh, we have invited our friends from the Medicaid team to join us today to um, support uh, uh, this TA session. Um, please, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. We'll get your answers to you just as soon as possible. I just want to acknowledge that um, there's are there's a a uh, there's a question asking for an update on the FAQ. Um, the questions from the last TA. And I just want to acknowledge that we are still working on those. Um, we have not forgotten about them, and we are not resting on our laurels there, We're, and we will be getting those out soon. So please know that um, there's a whole team of folks working very hard to get you the answers that you need. And um, I think we can move to the next slide. All right, so these are this is our agenda for today. Um, we're going to talk about the Measure 110 um, program and um, the fact that all services that are funded through Measure 110 need to be free for the recipients or the participants. Um, we're going to talk about fee for service, maximizing Measure 110 funds by leveraging Medicaid, uh, Medicaid claim submission. Or, uh, the Medicaid team is going to talk about um, electronic versus paper submission. Um, the use of Measure 110 for funding services, um, insurance documentation and records retention, and we're going to um, have some Medicaid, we have a, a slide with Medicaid resources that will be uh, sent out, these slides will be sent out just like all the others, um, so you will have those links available to you. So how to ask questions, again, just like every other um, TA session, all lines are muted. Um, please put your questions in the chat and we will respond to you via email. Um, additionally, um, please let us know if you have any accessibility needs. It's, it's really important that you do that before the meeting so that we can have those set up. And I do see a hand. I just want to acknowledge that I do see, Scott, you have your hand up. If you have a question, can you please drop it in the chat for us? Um, we are unable to unmute people. It's just how the Zoom is set up. Um, next slide, please. All right. So um, as is stated in the RFGA and the Senate bill and, and is true for all Measure 110 um, um, program services, Burn partners must provide Measure 110 funded services free of charge, regardless of the client's ability to pay or their insurance status. Um, so you are funded to provide services um, for free to folks, regardless of the type of service that you're funded for. Services must be accessible at no cost to all clients, including those who experience substance use disorder, 
those um, without need for referral or designated pathway to recovery and who are indigent or categorically ineligible for Medicaid. Anybody who comes into your organization seeking burn services should be able to access them. Burn partners will submit claims for services where Medicaid and private insurance is available, but if insurance does not pay, the bill will not fall to the client. Um, so uh, we, we are never, never going to be billing clients for services. If you, if you do not bill Medicaid, then that's a whole nother situation that we will get to on a further slide. Um, burn partners um, uh, cannot delay services while an insurance claim is being processed and clients cannot be charged for services if insurance doesn't pay. So again, we're just reiterating that uh, the uh, payment is never to fall on the client. Nobody should be denied services if, with, if they do not have insurance or they do not have the ability to pay. And we cannot delay services based on any, any, any part of that. Next slide, please. Okay, so is, I believe this is, what number slide are we on here? Is this five? Okay, I'll just take it. Uh, Burr partners should submit insurance claims where possible and if they bill insurance. I just wanna acknowledge that real quickly that we have some peer run organizations, we have some har um, harm reduction organizations we that do not bill Medicaid. Uh, we have organizations that, that we have funded that are not set up to bill Medicaid. We are not telling you that you have to bill Medicaid. We're saying if you do bill Medicaid, and that is something that is part of your organization already, that you uh, that you should bill Medicaid first, okay? So for services that are currently being funded by insurance, Measure 110's funds should not supplant existing funding, okay? That is in the Senate bill. Um, I believe it's in the RFGA as well. Um, burn partners may be able to maximize Measure 110 funding by enrolling as a provider with Medicaid. So if you do want to become a Medicaid provider, um, we can support you and give you TA around doing that. We recognize Medicaid eligibility will depend upon uh, service area el eligibility and provider capabilities, right? We are not telling any organization that they have to create a billing department if that is not the direction that they want to go. Once established as a Medicaid provider, if that's an option, Medicaid eligible services should be submitted as claims to Medicaid. And we're gonna go into that a little in deeper detail in um, upcoming slides. Medicaid payment is payment in full for a given service. So I think this is really important. If uh, a participant comes to my um, facility, or my get services from my organization and I bill Medicaid for that, that is payment in full. I do not then get to use measure one ten dollars to cover that same service. There might be ancillary services. We know Medicaid is kind of a more restrictive type of funding, right? So if I can't buy a bag of groceries for a, for a participant with Medicaid, that's fine. But if it is a Medicaid billable service, we don't then get to use Measure 110 funds to say, I don't think Medicaid paid me enough for that. I'm gonna bill Measure 110. Um, if the service is ineligible for Medicaid, burn partners may use Measure 110 funding. And that's really what it's for. Measure 110 funding is the funding of last resort at times. Uh, especially when we're talking about Medicaid billable services at organizations that bill insurance. Um, we have some links here uh, that might be um, helpful for you all um, who are interested in any more guidance around um, billing. Next slide, please. Hi, uh, my name is Todd Howard. I'm the Provider Enrollment Manager with Oregon Medicaid. And I just wanted to briefly cover this slide and the enrollment process. Um, as you can see on the slide, generally what we want you to do is if you're interested in, if you're already enrolled in Medicaid, uh, then it's just about maintaining your provider file and contacting us is probably old hat. For those, that you, for those of you that have not enrolled in Medicaid, uh, 
a good first step is to call is to either contact us by phone by email you could go browse our website um, if you're interested in enrolling your organization there's a number of forms that are required um, as part of that process if you have any questions any of the staff that, that answer the phone would be able to assist you with that process um, and uh, part of enrolling in Medicaid too is you can see if people are eligible um, and we also can check to see if your providers are, el uh, are enrolled. We do have on the provider portal, you can check to see if there's a rendering provider as part of your organization that may be enrolled in Medicaid. So those can be looked up there as well. Um, and then the kind of last bullet here is um, we want you to use Medicaid funding. So if you're a Medicaid provider, we want you to go ahead and bill us for those services. Um, most of you that are Medicaid eligible are already billing for services and, and probably already have the process down pretty well. Those of you who are not, we're happy to assist the enrollment through the enrollment process and help you navigate that in addition to uh, navigating the claims process as well, which I think is our next slide. Hello, I'm Renee Perkins, and I am lead for Provider Services Unit. This is where you can reach out to us for all kinds of assistance, including provider enrollment. We can help direct you to the right place. This slide is regarding the Medicaid claim submission, electronic versus payer submissions. The M110 team will provide Medicaid instructions explaining the Medicaid management information system. We call this MMIS. Claim submission processes are all done through MMIS when it's electronic. Provider service contracts, or excuse me, contacts and links to other resources, including claim instructions, are provided in the Medicaid resource slide, which we'll show later. Electronic claims, you're going to navigate to the Medicaid Management Information System, or MMIS, and this is our provider portal. Here you see the link for that portal. And once the claims are submitted, claim status information is immediately available. This is a live system. It's done in real time and claims will either end in a paid status, denied or suspended status. So you could see those three different options, but you can always look at your claims and you can also receive your remittance advice or EOB information there as well. If you are going to submit paper claims, there are instances when a hard copy attachment must be submitted if the claim is over a year old or as instructed by the OHA, Oregon Health Association, for special handling. Some claims are gonna require a person to actually step in and do some extra work on these claims, so they're processed by an individual. And in these cases, that's when you wanna use your paper claims. We have a link here for submitting electronic claims. That's gonna give you some information on how to do that. And then down below that, we have a claims manual PDF. That is a wonderful guide to help show you how to um, navigate the system, bill in the system, and gives you a basic guidance for that whole process. And then of course, our unit is always available for additional questions. Next slide. Sorry, I couldn't find my mute button. Thank you so much. Um, super helpful. So, uh, I and I do when I just acknowledge there are a lot of questions in the chat. We will definitely get you answers to those. Um, we are sending out the slides, and um, so uh, you will have these links and and these slides at uh, available to you. So, use of Measure One Ten funding for services, and I think we saw some questions in the in the chat regarding this. Um, it is acceptable, acceptable to use Measure 110 funding in the following scenarios. The uh, individual does not, or the partner, I'm sorry, the organization, the burn partner, does not have the capacity or infrastructure to submit insurance claims. The service is not eligible for insurance. The partner is unable to determine if the client has insurance. The partner does not have access to client insurance information. 
or if an organization service model is based upon providing free services that are not covered by insurance. Um, so these are as some examples of when it is acceptable uh, to use measure 110 funds rather than insurance. Next slide, please. All right, um, so uh, next we're gonna talk about insurance documentation and records retention. This is really important. So um, in, <clears throat> I know there's been a lot of questions about this and we've said this over and over again. I just wanna reiterate it here because I know we're not all in the same meetings, but OHA has waived the requirement for the burden partners to submit patient insurance submission plans. However, grant recipients must comply with the terms and conditions of their grant agreements, including the requirements that grant recipients submit insurance claims where applicable and maintain records that demonstrate that grant recipients are utilizing insurance where applicable. And this really comes back to the supplantation language in Senate Bill 755. Um, so don't worry about the uh, patient insurance submission plans. That is, we are waiving that. However, we're not waiving the rest of it, <laughs> essentially. Um, how long do you need to retain insurance claim information? Per the Measure 110 requirements, burn partners must retain records for a minimum of six years. However, please consult OHA staff regarding HIPAA record retention requirements for both medical and claims information. And you can do so by contacting the provider enrollment um, inbox, which uh, that is the, the inbox address is there for you. And next slide, please. So here are some Medicaid resources. Again, we're gonna send these slides out so that you have this easily accessible to you and you can click on the links. Um, there is a Health System Provider Services Center and that's the phone number. Um, and you can do all of these things there. Um, there, is, there are some links regarding professional billing instructions and a substance use disorder fact sheet. Next slide. All right, so um, this brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, please, I just wanna call out, I did see um, a question in the chat about where to submit things to, uh, to Measure 110. Please submit things to the Measure 110 grants inbox, which is on this slide, it's in the chat. Um, and, uh, I know sometimes it's easier or or we might be more inclined to just email folks, but it's you're really gonna have the best results of you if you email that measure one time grants inbox. Sometimes people go out of town and emails get lost. So that um, inbox is monitored by several folks. Um, and I I want to acknowledge there's a lot of stuff in the chat that um, I was not able to read. Um, I do know, um, let me see. So that is where you would send any type of certificate of insurance. Please send it to the Measure 110 grants inbox. Not to be confused with the Measure 110 inbox. Please use the grants inbox. Um, and I'm just, I'm just uh, cruising through here to see if there are any questions that I can answer off the top of my head. Um, some of the questions that you are submitting are really, they're all really great questions. Some of them are very specific. And I wanna ensure I am not a, uh, a expert in Medicaid. And I wanna make sure those experts are the ones answering your questions. So that is why I'm not going to answer them live because I do not wanna give you the wrong information. Um, Oh look, and we're getting some we're getting some peer support here um, from other organizations. Thank you so much for that, um, Bonnie. Very kind of you. 
Um, and it looks like there's some issues with reporting. We will definitely um, reach out to you regarding that. Um, sometimes stuff can be glitchy, so we do understand and we will definitely contact you. And with that, um, I'm going to ask Todd and Renee if there are any questions that they're seeing in the chat that they feel comfortable answering. If not, um, I believe uh, we we might be able to uh, end early, but I want to ensure that um, to the Measure 110 email, do you have a timeline for responding to questions? Yes, so we are responding to questions as soon as possible. I just want to like acknowledge and level set here that we have, you know, um, I believe we have over 250 grant agreements. So we are getting to your questions just as soon as possible. You can imagine if you have three questions and if everyone has three questions, it's a lot of questions. But we do have a team of folks working on getting you those answers. There is a question in here uh, that I think is covered in the slide deck as well. Um, it says, if you're enrolled as a Medicaid provider, you're obligated to bill, or can you simply enroll to access for eligibility? Uh, if you're a Medicaid provider, we are. We, we're the expectation is that you would bill Medicaid for these services. find my mute button there. Uh, I'm also seeing a lot of great questions, um, but definitely something that I wanna make sure I'm giving accurate answers for. So um, if there is something I can address in here or have someone else address, uh, we definitely will get those questions answered with accurate answers. Okay, and I do wanna just acknowledge there is a question about the insurance email that was sent out, number one, Apologies, that was um, meant to be a BCC. As you can imagine, it was not intended to, you know, um, be sent to all of you. Um, and if you have, so I, I would encourage you to read the email and look at the um, insurance forms that we're asking for. Think to yourself, did I submit all of those insurance forms? If you didn't, that's likely what we're talking about. Additionally, if you could look at the dates on your policies, that might be why we're reaching out. We did reach out to um, a targeted group of folks. So um, if uh, if you have space, if you do that, and you think that through and you have additional questions about your specific, um, um, why you received that email, feel free to reach out and we will um, look up your specific organization's um, insurance documents and let you know what we're missing or what's, what we need you to um, renew. All right. All right, well, um, with that, if folks wanna um, take the opportunity to drop any more questions in the chat, um, I think we can go ahead and um, end early, um, but we will have the Medicaid team work very closely with us to get these Medicaid questions answered um, for you all. Um, I want to tell you how much I appreciate all the work you're doing in your communities. I come from a community-based organization, and I understand that um, the work, you, how vital the work you do is um, and how many lives you change. And I just, I have so much gratitude to you for the work that you do. Um, Oregon is be a better place for having your organization in it. Um, and uh, which was also recognized by the council who funded you. 